Studying overseas may be the dream for many Singaporean students, but funding these aspirations could lead to some nightmares for parents. In the third part of our series, The Wealth Outlook, Jonathan Pierce takes a look at how financial planning can help make these education dreams a reality. An opportunity to study at some of the best universities in the world. A change of scenery and a sense of freedom living on your own. And a chance to immerse yourself in a new culture and meet people from different walks of life. These are just some of the reasons that draw Singaporeans to desire to study abroad. But like all good things, it comes at a price, and for many, that price is usually underestimated. Most parents assume that education cost remains quite static. They don't think that education cost can be uh, going at this kind of increased pace, meaning that, you know, for example, if you look at education cost today and you were to factor in 10, 20 years from now, the cost can move into 5 to 10 multiples of current cost itself because of interest rate uncertainty and the rising cost as well. So as a result, I think these are the, uh, the misconceptions that parents have that whatever they have planned for is sufficient for this cost. But I think most parents would now realise that uh, if they don't plan for this in advance, then it will be quite a challenge for them to uh, fund their, their children's education costs in the future. HSBC's Value of Education survey found that Singapore students who study overseas say they spend an average of 46,425 Singapore dollars over the course of a degree. Their parents, however, say they contribute an average of $36,417 towards their child's undergraduate or postgraduate university education. This leaves students in Singapore with an average funding gap of $10,008, which is filled by bursaries, loans and the students' own income and savings. It was also found that 47% of the parents surveyed wished that they'd started saving for their child's education earlier, while 46% worry that they don't have enough financial resources to support them. Time is the best friend of the parent. The earlier they start and the more prepared they are, the less strained in terms of financial resources for the family. And I also strongly encourage them to reach out to the financial experts to help them plan and make more better informed decisions because they have different circumstances at different points in time as well. Education consultants IDP say that when planning their budget, parents must factor in more than just the cost of the school fees. The school fee is the most important part, but not other than the school fee, uh, yeah, uh, the parents have to consider about the cost of the living. And yeah, cost of the living, uh, that is uh, really the important part. Mm. Because, uh, yeah, for the week, the, like accommodation, yeah, they have to pay. And also the Australia, if they are considered for the rental of the car, even buying the second-hand car, but uh, still, yeah, it, it requires the, the money. While taking on a student loan or investing in insurance endowments remain the more popular options for many parents, some experts say it may not be enough. I'm not too keen about using insurance endowment because the returns are a bit too low. And if you want to use endowment to save for your kids' tertiary education, especially overseas education, you've got to set aside quite a bit of money for the premiums. If you're going to plan for an overseas education, it's going to easily cost 200, 300, or even 400,000 in five to 10 years' time. And uh, investment is probably the option that can give you the return that you need to reach that amount. As long as you understand what investment is all about and you have the risk appetite, investment will be a good option. In fact, Mr. Tan recommends that parents start early in their financial planning, even if their children are studying locally, as this too can be quite costly for most Singaporeans. My son is in university right now, and uh, just to study in a local uni, non-medicine, uh, school fees is anything between 10000 to 12000 a year. So if it's a four years program, then it's going to cost like forty to 50000 just for tuition fee alone. And then we are not uh, including the uh, daily expenses yet. 
Uh, most undergraduate will probably spend like $600 to $700 a month to cover everything. That works out to be another probably like $40,000 a year in living expenses. So if you add up, you know, um, local education, four years, non-medicine, can cost anything between seventy dollars to $90,000. That is not including the cost if they stay in the halls. That is not including the exchange programs that all these uh, undergraduates they go for. But despite the high costs, IDP says the number of students venturing abroad has been steadily increasing over the last few years. Every year, around 3,000 new students from Singapore to Australia and to K, it is around 2,800 and 3,000 per each destination. So those are UK, Australia and UK, all those two countries are the most popular and the highest number of the students at the destination. Ms Kim says the strong Singapore dollar and weaker pound in recent years has led to a swell of students opting to study in the United Kingdom. It's now almost on par with Australia as the go-to destination for Singapore students. But with increased volatility in currency markets, currency fluctuations have also become a cause of concern for parents. HSBC offers a solution with their quick FX app. This app is very good for helping them manage their foreign currency exposure. They know that they are going to travel to Australia, for example, in the next one month, and they will feel that uh, the Aus Australia price is going to come off in terms of the rates. Uh, they could actually put in the price in the app and wait for the rate to be reached, and they can execute uh, the trade automatically in the system, such that when they are there in Australia, the money has already been executed for them. And for parents who actually who are not into the market and very busy, I think what they can do is actually they can actually leverage on one of our services, the FX Order Watch, where they can actually uh, put in a limit order and they can wait for the price to reach the watch rate and the execution can be automatically converted for them.